We are embarking on our fourth annual haunted road trip. Next up, Philadelphia, Eastern State Penitentiary. The date, October 25th, 1829. The door is officially open in Eastern State Penitentiary. It was part of the reformatory Pennsylvania system. They wanted to build a humane prison, one where labor, solitude, and discipline could make the inmates penitent. This is where the name penitentiary roots from. But the prison took solitude way too Eastern far. Eastern State Penitentiary behind me is our second stop in our Gettysburg and Pennsylvania road trip. So let's go. Essentially built to house 250 prisoners inside such a gothic style design that was intentionally built to intimidate outsiders. Eastern State used extreme measures to ensure it would be 100% solitary confinement. Each prisoner was alone in their cell not to speak or interact with any other inmates. The contact they were allowed was very limited, even with the guards and other penitentiary workers. The design of very high ceilings and gothic-like church atmosphere or feeling of penance drove them nuts in time. Cell Block 1 is an original from when the penitentiary was originally constructed. These big block doors were built so when they were closed, they could see nothing, and guards were continuously facing abuse allegations. By 1866, solitary confinement would begin to phase out and the Pennsylvania system would end in 1913. The issue now became overcrowding. In 1926, the penitentiary had over 1,700 inmates to stay together in one small cell. Some notable prisoners of the penitentiary were Alfonsi, Scarface Capone, Victor, Babe Andrioli, Morris, the Rabbi Balber, Leo Callahan, Freda Frost, and William Francis Slick Willie Sutton. The Philadelphia court gave Capone the toughest sentence possible, known as a mob boss in Chicago, but because people feared getting on his bad side, they set him up in a completely luxurious suite adorned with beautiful carpets, exquisite art, and a radio, amongst many other things. In 1933, prisoners were tired of sharing small rooms and overcrowding, so they began to set fires within their cells, one of which was cell block 12, which now is rumored to be haunted. Prison guards report that the third floor doors open up by themselves. Punishment to the prisoners included cold bath dunks in the cold of winter, then hung to the wall until their skin bore icicles a torture chair where they were bound to the point of losing circulation. Some instances led to having limbs amputated. Next up is the iron gag, and it was put into the prisoner's mouth, ripping both the mouth and tongue with their hands tied behind their back. One record shows that an inmate died after this method of torture. By 1866, solitary confinement would begin to phase out, and the Pennsylvania system would end in 1913. There have been over 1,000 deaths marked in the infamous Death Ledger. Causes of death, tuberculosis, suicide, and murder. In cell block 8, Joseph Havill stabbed his cellmate with a pair of scissors. 
Other interesting facts about the penitentiary is that it was built on a farm overlooking Philadelphia. The cost was $800,000, which was considered very expensive at the time. Leo Callahan was the only one to successfully escape, although over 100 inmates attempted. He and five others scaled the 30-foot wall with the ladder they made. He was imprisoned for assault and battery with intent to kill. All other inmates were captured. Callahan is technically still at large. As we wrap up part one of a two-part series of Eastern State Penitentiary, I bring you to no other than Victor Babe Andrioli, who killed a state trooper from Pennsylvania in 1937. He had a first-degree murder charge, but escaped in 1943 in a delivery truck. He was recaptured in Pennsylvania weeks later and killed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for part two, Mobsters and the Most Infamous Eastern State Penitentiary, coming soon. Thank you for watching.